Hey all, I'm Jenny and I'm going to show you how to use Edisoft's Print Builder to create a dynamic sign-off section for your certificates. If you need to have more than one sign-off on your cert, I'm going to show you how to set that up inside Print Builder for today's Tip Tuesday. So I'll show you here that I have an event where two employees signed off. The employee that performed the event was employee V, and the employee that approved it was employee B. I am currently logged in as employee B, so I'll just go ahead and show you walking through that. So the only important part of this event is the sign-off section. And the cert type, obviously, because that's going to determine which cert in Print Builder that this will print. But it requires a vendor name, so I'm just going to put one in here. So here is the sign off section of the event, and I will show you the configuration for that also. But this is the sign off section and I'm the user logged in. So I'm going to highlight that and then add my sign off. So employee B is the user who is completing this event. And because there are two necessary, this is going to be incomplete when I finish it. And I am going to log out and log back in as employee V. So employee V in this example will be the approver. And I can go to my pending work for myself and see that this needs approval. Go to the sign off section because I mean, Actually, the person would be going through this and checking everything to in order to approve it. But we're going to highlight the approval, add it, choose employee V, the one we're logged in as. And so now this is complete, complete, and this will complete the event. I'm not going to print anything. I don't actually, that's not part of it, but I don't have a printer set up. <laughs> so that's why those show up. And back to the equipment information. And you can see that this is now a past. It employee V is the one who approved it. So that's entered by employee B is the one who performed it. And here's my cert over here. So you can see here that I have a section that shows who approved it with their employee signature, their employee first and last name, and their title, and the date and time of the approval. This shows the date and time of the sign off when the employee finished the event. So this is employee B's first and last name and their title and their sign off signature image. So I am just going to show you how to set up the workflow. Basically, you're going to set up your sign off rules, you're going to create two. One is the user logged in required. And this one will be approval. So you have the rule names here. And you can put off any sort of filter. So the approval on this one has to be a system administrator. So I'm going to open Print Builder and show you how that is laid out. And so mine is called Two Sign Offs, as you saw. And here's the sub report section for approve for the sign offs, the sign off sub report. And what I have done here is I, in order to make it 
show the sign off side by side, like we have here, I have set it up so that this is two columns. You might get away with three, the way this little box is designed. So the title is the part that does not repeat, but this part is going to repeat for each sign off associated with that specific event. And we had two, we had the user logged in and we had the approved by. And so what I've done is I've made this dynamically print out the like caption depending upon the reason for the sign off. And you can see here I have the employee's sign off's employee's first name, sign off's employee's last name, sign off's employee's title. This is their signature picture. This is the sign off date and time. And this is just a label there. So if we go into the sign offs, all right, so we are in the sub report under the calc tab. If we go to the details section over here on before print, I have highlighted, you can see the procedure that I created. And basically, the approval and user logged in are the same as in the workflow configuration rule name. So you can dynamically change that label by the rule names. There's another section, however, that's important in the design because the normal process is for these to go stack up on top of each other, but because we didn't want to add a second page to this report, we went into the report builder information in over here for the properties in the detail. So in the detail of which is this section here of this sub report, we wanted to make it two columns so we could go left to right. And here's the first thing that we needed to change was change this setting in the properties for details. So you've got to have the sub report highlighted, the detail highlighted for that sub report. And then you need to have the generation section column traversal. So that's just a drop down. You can set that left to right. And then there's one other section where you're going to actually say, declare the columns. So we were on the detail section and we're gonna to wanna to click on the report part of the report tree under, make sure you've got your sub report highlighted. And then we're gonna click the report part then we're going to go down to the layouts here and we're going to make this two two columns and you might have to play with this but this is what worked out for us we are if i wanted to make this three i think i probably could i would adjust this to appropriately divide eight by three <laughs> um and we could probably fit three in here. But that's pretty much the whole process. And I hope this is something that you can find and use.